My title is Director of Global Leadership Programmes here at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and I'm also a consultant in global public health at Public Health England. In practice I'm a clinician uh, uh, specialised in public health and I am focused on strengthening leadership uh, amongst health leaders around the world and I'm also a trustee at the Royal Society of Medicine. As a young woman I experienced countries, living in countries across the world before settling in West Africa and then I returned to the UK to work in the National Health Service with dedicated colleagues and went on to specialise in public health. Really that journey that I've travelled has shown me the richness of people and that's what I get pleasure from is that diversity of culture, the working with people from different sections of society and really it's those differences uh, between us and the fact that some, uh, some aspects of who we are are the same. But all of that together I find inspiring uh, and refreshes me in, in what I do. All of this makes me look to the horizon and it's important to have our goals but to be willing to revisit our ambitions. And when you do that and you liberate your mind, anything is possible. I received two pieces of advice, um, things that made me think at a critical time in my life when I was about 12 years old. And these are, keep your head down and remember who you are. And the second was, never lose your spontaneity. And really it's the association with who gave me those words and when that has had a real impact. So the first, keep your head down and remember who you are, was about believe in yourself, don't be daunted, know that you can succeed. And that came to me uh, when I was sitting a scholarship uh, exam to a boarding school and I had to board as part of the assessment. And I received a postcard whilst I was there on the second or third day from the headmaster of my current school. And that's all it said, keep your head down and remember who you are. Uh, and those words stay with me um, and keep me focused on the tasks ahead. The second, which is never lose your spontaneity, came to me from uh, an individual who, a, a teacher, but I had remained in correspondence with. Uh, and he sent that through as a note uh, accompanied by a picture, a framed photo of a leaping dolphin which was delivered by a colleague of his. And very sadly, this teacher passed away shortly after delivering that to me. So again, it, it stays with me. The impact of that is that I recognise that our journey is, our life is a journey uh, and we're only here for a short time and I find that quite li liberating to recognise that and it's important to take the opportunity at times to enjoy some spontaneity, whether it's creativity, whether it's humour, uh, to make the most of the present um, that we're living in. My career highlight has been becoming a parent. I found that it has enriched my working life. Having that balance between parenthood and my work they keep each other in check. Uh, I find that the experience of, of parenting is humbling. Um, I've learned an awful lot about myself, but it's also very refreshing um, in terms of your perspective towards work. I work as an executive coach and I coach health leaders from around the globe. And what is universally an issue is parenting, whether you're male or whether you're female. How do you make the decision there's always a, a feeling it's going to have a huge impact on careers. So when do you proceed and take those next steps with the career planning that you're also doing? When an employer is able to offer flexibility in terms of hours, in terms of parental leave, then that decision making is easier and it allows that employer to get the very best from its workforce collectively. My husband, who's a uh, consultant, paediatrician and an academic, he went part-time to allow me to return to work full-time when we'd had our first child. I find it inspiring that there is another generation coming and another and another and there's that perspective which is a population perspective and it allows you to keep looking beyond just the here and now. To progress in your career I have learned that you need to know yourself, you need to know your values and you need to draw on those as strengths when you need them. When you come across barriers, uh, you have options available to you. 
So if we assume a political issue, your options are you work with the issue, you circumvent the issue, or you work hard to push through the agenda that you're responsible to deliver, knowing that your plans are going to be supported by others and that you've got your facts straight. And if you're going to do that last one, it's important to have a good dollop of resilience in your coffee in the mornings. When you face challenges, it's really important to know your values and that will give you the strength and the certainty of how to make the decisions and how to progress. You're not going to be dictated of by other people's perspectives of you. I would identify the inequity between the global north and south as the greatest challenge to global health. This is across all sectors that impact on the health of communities, such as global wealth and financial flows. There is a distance between those that are making the decisions at the global policy level and the communities that they serve. The conference is very important. It represents a movement um, in, in the current time. Women are more willing to be outspoken about the barriers that they face and the inequities in scenarios that they have to manage. And really, I think women now are encouraged to speak out following the hashtag MeToo movement and other revelations that have come out from the humanitarian world. So this is really a time to seize the opportunities. Dr. Tedros, the Director General of the WHO, is an alumnus of the school. And he has made it explicit to have women leaders uh, within his team at the WHO. Really, the support that the conference offers is uh, something which has ripples. It's concentric circles going out that moves across immediate contacts, across communities and across the population. And the conference acts as the stone that's being thrown into the water to again set off those ripples for another year. I believe that the greatest rewards in life come from supporting others to reach their full potential professionally and personally in their lives. And we do this with great success with the executive programme in Global Health Leadership, which is delivered here at London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, and I'm programme director of that programme. In that course, we work with leaders so that they are better equipped to negotiate health uh, for their populations and to deliver more better health outcomes for them. We teach a leadership mindset that is about influencing but doing that with integrity and using very strong skills of global health diplomacy. And it's these values and principles of leadership, ethical leadership, which is something that we embody within the course and there's a lot of mutual learning within the, the peer cohort of these health leaders. We also speak a lot about systems leadership and that involves working across sectors and working through all levels of your health system so that as the top with your vision, uh, you are nonetheless able to empower and motivate individuals across the system right down to those who are delivering health at the coalface. And I believe that is where we can really develop leaders for the future to deliver health for populations. The movement to develop gender equity benefits from mutual support. So there are roles for men as well as women working in the health sphere to move this agenda forward. There is enormous power in collective action and there is a huge role to be played in calling out and not just looking the other way. Three words which will make a difference in many, many contexts are know your values.